Hey guys, it's Xbox Nut, and before I turn around, uh, I'd just like to say that I've done nearly all of the ALU. Uh, I did have a problem concerning uh, the enabler for a couple of them, which I will tell you about and tell you how to fix it in case it happens to you, because I tried to compact it. But basically, I've done all seven functions that I plan to do. All that's left now is to connect it to an output bus, which will just go down the... Uh, down the line to the input control panel place thing with op code which will be connected to that decoder over there and it will run and we can play around with it so here we go that's it that's the 4-bit ALU inputs and functions it's actually quite small uh, I, I'm really happy with what, how I designed it I designed it quite well in my opinion all you have is the inputs in one line they go into all the functions and the outputs will be on the opposite line going back and uh, the enablers are all of these gates towards the end these ones, these vertical ones here are the replacements for my faulty ones I couldn't do because of a simple redstone uh, function, well not really a function, a redstone what redstone does really in terms of how I was trying to lay out but basically each AND gate controls the input and uh, the enabler input and so only when they're both on i.e. nothing will go on the input bus until the at least the enabler's on and the enabler will only enable what you want to show and you'll put you'll enable which one you want to show by the decoder because there's a 3 bit, three bit input for the decoder and we all know that 3 can three inputs or three bits can add up to seven in binary so that's eight because there's zero 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 as well zero to seven is eight functions but I'm not putting one in for the zero so there's seven functions which are adding, oring, anding, knotting or inverting, subtracting, dividing by two and multiplying by two I'll explain them all now so basically each functions enabler runs underground with a big space underground that I'll show you in a second and they all get enabled by a switch connecting to each function which hasn't been connected to the decoder over there yet but basically uh, this is the problem that I had with my AND gates I'm just going to turn the fog down because I've got a pretty bad connection uh, this is my original design as a couple of you might have seen or may many of you the AND gates were quite compact uh, which meant that obviously the OR gate and most of the other ones could be squished together but now, which is actually created much space now that I've done this uh, the problem was if you can imagine here, the enabler was going to power this from underground but when it does, it will turn this on automatically because this is a raised up version basically if you imagine, this is the ground level and this is actually reversed, but if that's the uh, the enabler it will power this redstone. I don't know why that does. It doesn't really make sense, but it's a really useful function sometimes. And unfortunately, it's got the better of me. And so I've had to redesign the AND gates, but luckily there was a uh, vertical AND gate design, which I, I'm sorry about. I don't know who made it. Uh, I credit to you if you're watching. But it's really, really compact. It's only five high, including the redstone on the top, but that's not a problem and look it's given me two blocks of space which I haven't been able to fill so adding I've shown you, oring I've showed you, anding I've shown you this is the notter it literally just inverts the power and the, the way the and gate works is really clever the redstone on the top has to enable this torch by turning it off and the enabler has to enable this torch to turn it off uh, by sending it power which if one of them is on it will power this redstone which will turn this off but if they're both off, the redstone will turn off, the torch will turn on, and the power will go through. So, that's the the notter. It literally just inverts the power, and it's inverted here. The inputs are inverted. The reason the outputs are inverted on everything is because the only reason you're not going to have anything on the output bus is if nothing's being powered. So you have to send power to the torches, and when it's on, it will take off the torch, or send power to the torch, and the output will light up. I plan to have the buses, if you can imagine, this is the first bit, it will have a long line, second bit, same thing, third bit and fourth bit, but each one will power it uh, in a place in the 
in a section where there's no redstone power going to it. And so when you power the redstone on the bus, on the bus, it will go all the way down to the input, no matter where it is. It might be quite hard to understand, but when I'm finished, uh, it will be quite easy, and I'll explain it there. This is the subtractor. The way a subtractor works is it has it's a four bit adder with inverted second inputs. That's all it is inverted there. However, the first inputs, which you're taking the number from, are not inverted. So the top number will be the first number, and the second number will be what you're taking away from the top number. I haven't quite tested it or worked out what happens when you take a, a big number away from a small number, but I'll do that later. And then the only difference is between the numbers is that the ones are not inverted. It might look like it is here, but that's actually double inverted, so inverted there and inverted here. So that's the way how a subtraction works. The next one is the shifters, are the shifters. The first one is a, uh, I think it's a left shifter. Yes, yeah, a left shifter. This actually multiplies, uh, a little demo here. If you're left shifting 5, so that's a 1 and a 4, you will get a 2 and an 8, which is 10. Or let's say you're left shifting eight, uh, 10, which is a 2 and an 8, skipping out the 4, you get 20, with a 4 and a 16. Uh, it's very clever how binary does that, and we can take advantage of it simply by shifting them. So this first output here doesn't go into the first input for the bus, which it should. It goes into the second. Second goes into the third, third goes into the fourth, fourth goes into the fifth. If you're wondering, uh, I haven't actually taken any schematics for any of these uh, complete functions. I've just used my own general redstone knowledge of AND gates and NOT gates and OR gates and shifting things. It's quite simple if you think about it. The only thing I use is the adder and subtractor uh, like schematics, but I'm not really prepared to inv invent a whole new adder just to put put in there. And quickly before it gets dark, this is the right shifter which takes input 2 and puts it into input 1. Input th uh, input 3 but it's bit uh, it's the bits representing 4 goes into 2 and the 8s go into the 4s which is also shown here. So if you right shift 3, sorry if you right shift 6 because obviously you can't right shift 15 because you can't right shift the first one so it automatically goes to zero. If you right shift, uh, what's that? Two plus four plus eight. Uh, if you right shift fourteen, yeah, fourteen, you'd get seven, like that, because they all shift over one. Uh, it will, it would naturally shift by. If you shifted it by two, it would divide by n to the power of two, which is four. But I'm only shifting it by one, so it divides by n to the power of one. Sorry, two to the power of one which is 2, so it divides or multiplies by 2 by shifting it one place. Now I will, I'm sorry it's dark, I can't actually see myself either, but now I'm going to go underground and show you where the functions will be uh, put into the decoder, so the decoder outputs will go into the functions, which is here, um, close in on the ground just so I can see easier without having to put torches everywhere. Um, that's the adder, they all root into one, so if I wanted to enable one, I just power the torch underneath the glass. Adder, aura, ander, notter or inverter, subtractor, and then shifting. So that's pretty much it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't uh, hesitate to pe uh, message me on YouTube or on the forums or something. Uh, I just like to say thank you very much for everyone who subscribed to me because I've reached a hundred subscribers. <laughs> Yay! Thank you very much. That's probably helped to probably help from Stephen. So you know, if you're sent here from Stephen, don't uh, be afraid to comment saying I was sent here from Stephen. Thumbs up if you were, because I'm sure a lot of people will be. Thanks to him. And also, if you didn't last time, you should go and check out my friend DX Link J, who's making an 8-bit ALU. Uh, his is considerably bigger than mine, but that's because he didn't really. He wasn't really worried too much about compaction, whereas I, I really thought about how I'd do this, and I'm pretty happy with my design. Uh, if you have any questions about any of the functions, please don't hesitate to ask. I'm happy to answer any of them. Uh, soon I will hook up the decoder. We'll have, we will have two 4-bit four input, four inputs, a 5-bit output, and we'll have 3 bits for opcodes. Uh, is that everything? Yeah. 
that's pretty much everything. I will do some demonstrations of all the functions when I've hooked up the output screen because it's too much effort to just run there and back every time. But thank you very much for watching. I'm going to put up my file save after I've finished it. Uh, although, yeah, it's just it's not worth putting up now because if you want to learn from it, you need everything to be hooked up easily rather than me putting signs absolutely everywhere. But thank you very much for watching. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe, message me. I just love feedback. Feedback is more important than subscribers in my opinion. Although subscribing is an amazing bonus because everyone who subscribes to me is an absolute legend. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it and learnt from it. So Yari, thank you.